Hey everybody, today we're going to go over how to play Dominion Online. To start, go to dominion.games and sign up. I have already signed up with a username and password. So I'll log in here. And the very first thing I want you to do is make sure you're on the matching tab and click one bot. This will have a, have a set up a game with one robot. Each player in Dominion starts with a deck of 10 cards, seven copper and three estates. So my opponent here, Lord Raddington, will also have a deck of 10 cards with the exact same cards. When I start the game, the deck will be shuffled and I'll draw five cards and the computer is going to do this for me automatically. So it looks like I drew a hand of three copper and two estates and I could have gotten very different uh, hands as well. Um, just one estate and four copper or five copper here for my first hand. The way that play works now is I'm going to play the copper that I have and I can either play them one at a time or I can click this button auto play treasures to play all the copper all at once. And that gives me three copper to buy a new card. And I can buy any of these cards in this main pool of cards up here that cost three or less, or I can buy silver or copper or estates or curses over here too. Anything that costs three or less. Um, if you wanna see what these cards actually do, I can go and click on this kingdom button and now I can read exactly what these cards are doing. So I'll go back to the play area. And the first thing I, I typically want to do when I'm playing Dominion like this is get upgraded currency. So I'm going to go ahead and buy a silver to start out. And now it's my opponent's turn and they're going to buy something as well. For my next hand, it looks like I drew a four copper and one estate. So I'm going to go ahead and auto play those treasures again. And now I can buy something for four or less. And there's some really good options here. There's a smithy, which if I have that in my hand, I'm going to be able to draw extra cards. Or there's this militia here, which gives me extra money and makes my opponents discard cards, which is a good action too. So I'm going to go ahead and buy that militia. And that ends my turn. Now my opponent is able to buy things. And if the robot's going very fast over here, I can look through this turn log to see exactly what they did. So let me go ahead and auto play my, my treasures again. I had three to buy and I'm going to go ahead and once again, get a silver. Uh, and in my next hand, I've, I drew some great cards, but my opponent has uh, played a militia. So now I have to discard down to three. So I'm going to discard this card because I can't play it anyway. And let me discard one of these coppers. And then the, my opponent will finish their turn and we'll buy some things. And I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to play this uh, Militia. The, the way that this works is this is an action card. And at the beginning of your turn, you're allowed to play action cards, even before you buy anything at all. And I actually have a limit on what I can do. I can only play one action card and I can only buy one thing each turn. So as soon as I play this action card, you'll see that the number of actions I have go from one action to zero actions. So I can't play any more actions at this point. Uh, but this already gave me two uh, money with which to buy. And I can play my remaining treasures. So now I can buy something up to five. There's some really great options for that too. I could buy this festival here, which would give me additional actions so I could play even more cards if that was in my hand. Um, I could get this mine, which is going to allow me to upgrade my treasure cards from copper to silver to gold and so on and so forth. I could buy this witch that allows me to draw cards and makes other people draw these curse cards, which is not so great for them. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and buy that witch too. Okay, so it's my turn again. I got four copper. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to buy myself. Hmm, I'm going to buy myself a smithy here. Okay, and my opponent played a witch, which made me draw a curse. So again, I've got this hand here, and I'm going to start out by playing my action cards if I have any. I have one to play, so I'll play that. Um, and that forced my opponent to discard some cards. And I'm going to go ahead and play my treasures. And now I have seven treasures, or seven money, so I can go ahead and buy something really nice and big here. I could either get the six 
point action card there or I could get a gold and I think I'm going to go ahead and buy that gold because that's when I play that it's going to give me a lot of money okay so it's my turn again I'm going to start once more by playing my action cards this particular action is going to let me draw two more cards um, and it gave my opponent a curse I'm going to play my treasures and I could look around here I can buy anything for four and I'm not feeling super uh, excited about anything too much, so I'm just going to go ahead and buy another silver. And the game progresses like this, just back and forth, back and forth, taking turns and, and buying things to make your deck better and better and better. So I'll play the smithy here as my action. That draws me three cards. Now I've got a whole bunch of money here. I'm going to lay all that down. I have eight money to buy. And what I'm going to go ahead and do with that money is I'm going to go ahead and buy a province. And the game ends when all of the provinces are bought. And the one thing that you want to be looking out for here is your victory points. So currently, I have six victory points. My opponent has two victory points. And when the game ends, whoever has the most victory points wins. So looking at this hand, I've got a only one action card to play so I might as well play it okay and then I can auto play all my treasures and I have seven so just short of a province so let me go ahead and get a, another gold because that's gonna give me more currency to get things like provinces later on here with this hand it's it's a really bad hand I got a curse I got three estates these estates give me these victory points but when they're in your hand they're not very good because they're essentially unplayable so I'm gonna go ahead and just auto play my treasures it's the only thing I can do I only got one to buy so I can't really afford anything on the board but I could get uh, I could buy a curse if I wanted to that's kind of silly though it's not a really good idea or I could buy another copper I don't really want to do that so I'm just gonna end my turn here without buying anything at all not a very good turn for me. Okay, looking at this hand, I'm going to start out with my action card. And I have got three, four, five. I'm going to have nine to buy. So I've got nine here. You could think, ah, oh, maybe I like this three card and I want to get three of those. Remember, I can't because I can buy at most one thing. At most one thing. So I'm going to look around here. And I think the thing to buy with that is going to be another province because I'm ahead in victory points. This is going to give me even more victory points and get me closer to ending the game. Okay, so starting out this one, I'm going to play my witch. And then it gives me a lot of money to do things with. I got five to buy. And now I'm going to think about, hmm, what kind of these action cards would help me out the most? So let me look back at my kingdom here. Um, that festival is really good because then I can buy more than one thing at a time. It's going to give me extra actions as well, and it's going to give me money. So that's a pretty good card. This one allows me to upgrade some of those copper into silver and some of those silver into gold. That's going to be really useful if I want to get those provinces later. And that witch has been really helpful because it's been allowing me to give my opponent curses and that sort of thing while drawing cards. At this point, I think I'm going to go for this festival just for variety's sake. Okay, when we're just playing back and forth, it looks like my opponent was able to get a province that time. So suddenly their victory point is getting a little bit closer to mine. I might be getting a little bit worried here. So to keep them from being so successful, I'm going to play this Militia, which makes them discard cards. So maybe they'll have a weaker turn next time. And I have six to buy, so I'm just going to go ahead and buy a gold. But you could buy a lot of things. There's a, there's a lot of different strategies that you could go with here. Um, and by playing against the, the, the robot, you might be able to find a strategy that works better for you. So I'll play my treasures here. I have two to buy. So if I wanted to, I could buy an estate here and that's gonna up my victory points a little bit. So let me go ahead and do that just for fun. That might not be a very smart idea though, because as you can see, when you have an estate in your hand, that makes your hand a lot less effective that turn. Okay. So I'm going to start out with my action card and look at this I drew another action card unfortunately I'm not able to play that great card because I've run out of actions if I happen to have that first though I could have played it and then the smithy 
And that, since that card gives me plus two actions, I would be able to play all those different cards. But as it is, I'm just sort of in a tight spot. Let me go ahead and autoplay my treasures. I've got nine, so I'm going to go ahead and buy that province. Remember, my, my particular strategy going into this is to just try to buy the provinces as quickly as possible to get a commanding lead on victory points and win before the robot does. That may not be a great strategy, especially in one facing more than one opponent. Also, when the kingdom, when the cards that I have to choose from here are different, you can sort of see certain card combinations that might go really well together. And then getting uh, focused on those card combinations is going to be a much better strategy overall. But it's not my turn right now. What I actually have to do, though, is I have to discard down to three, so I can I should be paying attention to these messages here. And I'm going to discard these two estates because they're not really helpful in my hand anyway. So now it's my turn, and I've got just one action, but I've got two different action cards to choose from. So I've got a tough choice here. I can either get plus two cards, which might give me some, some more currency to use, or I can just get the two uh, uh, money to work with and make my opponent discard their cards. And since I'm not very likely to draw anything better than two anyway, I think this is going to be a pretty good move here, just because it forces my opponent to have a, a bad hand of just two cards this turn. But that, that witch was also a pretty good option because it would curse my opponent, which is never, never a bad thing. And now I can buy cards. I have two to purchase. Let me go ahead and buy another estate. No action cards this time, so I'm just going to play all my treasures. And I can buy anything that I want to here. Anything that I like. Um, so let me go ahead and buy another festival. Let me go ahead and autoplay all my treasures. I have six to buy, so then I'll get a gold. Oop, I got cursed again. That's no good. And I'll play all this gold. And at this stage of the game, because we're only two provinces away from the end, and my opponent's pulled ahead of me, I'm going to use this money here to buy a duchy so I can at least get close to tying up with them. Start with my action card. And I have six money, and this time because I played that festival, I have two actions I could play and two buys. I'm out of action cards though, but I could buy two different things whose total amounts up to six. So I could buy three, uh, two villages if I wanted to, or two merchants, or a silver and a village. I'm just going to go ahead and buy a gold though. And I still got one more buy, so I could potentially get another copper or something like that, but I'm going to end my turn there. It looks like my, my robot friend is pulling ahead. So I'm going to start out with this card because then I can play them both. If I play my smithy first, I'll be out of actions and unable to play the festival. So I've got one action. I play my festival. And now I've got two actions and two buys. So I can still play this card. And it looks like I drew in some good cards here. And I'll auto play my treasures. So I've got six to buy. So let me go ahead and get another gold, and I'll end my bias. I'll play my treasures, and I'll buy a gold. I'm going to curse my opponent, and I will auto play my treasures, and I will go ahead and because they're pulling so far ahead, let me go ahead and buy a duchy. And now I have to discard down to uh, three, so I'll discard those cards that aren't very useful anyway. Notice when I discard cards, they don't vanish from the game. They go into my discard pile over here. And when my deck runs out, I shuffle my discard back into my deck. So I'll see those cards again. I'm going to get plus three cards. And I've just got... Uh, two to buy, so let me go ahead and buy an estate. And the thing I need to start to be worried about here is the game will end when all the provinces are gone, or 
when enough of the supply piles are gone. And the duchy is, is almost close to gone, the curses are almost close to gone. So when these supply piles run out, the game can end too, if you run out with too many supply piles. And it looks like that's what my opponent's strategy is right now, is to just try to run out on the supply piles. So I need to go ahead and start buying some points too. And you can see that there's no more duchies left, we can't buy any more duchies at all. So let me go ahead, I'm going to buy a province here. And now maybe I'm close to, to uh, getting a little bit ahead there. So it looks like my strategy here kind of panned out for me. While he was, my, while my opponent was buying a whole bunch of duchies, I was buying gold instead with the hopes of getting a big hand here where I could afford a province. And since I've got eight, I can buy that province. And since that's the last province, that'll end the game. And it'll end the game with me having six more victory points than I currently have. So I'll end at 39. My opponent will end at 36, which means that I will win. So let me buy that last province. And it says the game has ended. Click OK. Get some fun music. And now you can look at a recap of exactly what happened here. I ended with 39 points. My robot opponent ended with 36 points. And you can see exactly uh, where your points came from. Also, over here on the right, you can get a, a view of exactly what was in your deck. Look at how many curses, for example, I have because my opponent was playing so many witches. Um, but that will give you an idea of exactly what deck you were playing through. Um, and, and as you can see here, the main idea is uh, purchasing good cards to build up a deck to then use to get those, those victory cards and to hopefully end the game with the most victory points. Um, there are some balances that go into this, of course. I don't want to buy all these victory cards up front because then I'll have those victory cards in my hand and that will make my hands worse for buying more victory cards. So you need to balance it out between purchasing those victory cards which help you win the game in the end versus buying other cards that help you to purchase victory cards. So this is sort of the, 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 the basic essence of the game itself. Um, and that's what we'll be playing. Um, if you want to play again, you can click ready or you can go ahead and leave the table, or you can edit the table. I'm going to leave the table right now. And I could create a table to play with my friends, or I could just go over to matching, and I could uh, play with, say, for example, if I wanted to play with three bots, it'll create a, a, a game for me like that too. And now I'm facing three of these guys. And notice that when I start a new game, the cards that I'm playing with also change. So my kingdom may have very different cards than I saw before. For example, we didn't see the bandit before, we didn't see the laboratory before, or the market before, or the gardens. These are all wonderful new cards, but we did see some of these before. For example, we had the village in our previous game. And the cards that you'll see, no matter what in each game, are the side panel here. You'll always see gold and silver and copper, curses, estates, duchies, etc. What does change, though, is the number. So last game, because I was just facing one opponent, I only had twelve pro or eight provinces. And now because there's four people playing, three robots and me, I have 12 provinces. So the, 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 that changes the length of the game because if I had just four people playing and only eight provinces, the game would go a lot faster. All right, I'm not actually gonna play this game, but this is just to give you a, a, a solid idea of how to start playing. Um, there are a lot of great tutorials online. I'll post some links in the, uh, on Canvas. Um, but the main idea here is to get you guys signed up, logged in, and actually trying to play a game. Alright, good luck, and I will see you guys in class.